The movie opens on a 1920s moving picture production where there has been an accident with a stunt gone horribly wrong. There is panic as the crew desperately tries to rescue people from the water. A dead horse is recovered by a pulley crane as the movie stars learn what's just happened. Stay to watch this one all the way through as it involves some of the most amazing locations ever put on film. There is also a montage of dangerous, without a net, old school stunts that would never be attempted today. Like, subscribe, and comment to tell us what we are doing right and wrong. On with the show. Later at a hospital near Los Angeles, Alexandria, a young immigrant Romanian girl with an arm and a cast, is working on a very sweet, handmade note in her ward. She drops it to Nurse Evelyn, but it blows away and does not reach her. Alexandria wanders the hospital grounds looking for the note and sees that it has gone through a window and is being read by another patient. Alexandria goes into the ward and snatches the note from the man. He introduces himself as Roy. Roy is a Hollywood stuntman who is paralyzed from the waist down in the accident at the beginning of the film. Alexandria tells him that she heard her arm picking oranges with her family. Roy begins to tell her a story about Alexander the Great, whom he says she is named after. He says Alexander was also waiting for a message. Alexandria imagines a soldier wandering in an ancient building with a horse, but Roy tells her that Alexander is without his horse and lost in a desert with his soldiers, and that they have run out of water. The messenger arrives and tells Alexander all is lost because of his lust for water, and that the only water that remains is in a helmet that the messenger holds. For some reason Alexander pours the water from the helmet. Alexandria asks why. Roy tries to explain that it was Alexander's way of saying they were all equal. Alexandria thinks this was stupid and he should have shared it evenly. Some patients and a doctor into the ward, so Roy tells Alexandria to come back the next day and he will tell her a really epic story. The next day Alexandria goes to visit Roy, but he is being visited by a fellow stuntman. The man, who only has one leg, urges Roy to accept a settlement from the studio and he chides Roy for doing the stunt and also falling for the lead actress who he was trying to impress. When Alexandria talks with Roy, she asks if his friend is a pirate, he says jokingly, sometimes, and starts with the story. The story starts with an Indian man swimming to a small island where he reports to the four other prisoners that the brother of one of them is set for execution. The prisoners are united by a hatred of the Spanish Governor Odious, on whom they have sworn revenge. Governor Odious has imprisoned them on the island to humiliate them. The first is a slave named Adabenga, who Alexandria's imagination embodies as a friendly ice delivery man from the hospital. He was one of Governor Odious' slaves, but when his brother died from the heat in the sugarcane fields, he rebelled, led an uprising, and swore revenge on Governor Odious. Alexandria says, I like him. The second prisoner is called the Indian, who Alexandria imagines as the friendly man from her home Orange Grove. He was a wealthy man married to the most beautiful woman in the land, but Governor Odious fell in love with her and kidnapped her, then imprisoned her in the labyrinth of despair when she shunned him. She knew her only way out of the labyrinth was suicide. The Indian swore revenge on Governor Odious. Alexandria says, I like him too. The third is Luigi, a munitions expert who Alexandria sees as the peg-legged stuntman. He was exiled because Governor Odious feared his power. Luigi was shunned by everyone he knew on pain of death, even by his church, at Odious' insistence. He similarly swears revenge. The fourth is Charles Darwin and his monkey partner, Wallace. Darwin had sought a rare butterfly named Americanus Exotica. Governor Odious mocked him by sending one of the butterflies dead, thumbtacked inside a box, and as a result, Darwin swears revenge on Odious. The last prisoner, the Black Bandit, is embodied by Alexandria's father, at Roy's insistence. The Black Bandit and his brother the Blue Bandit were captured and condemned to death by Odious. They managed to escape and then separated, but the Blue Bandit has been recaptured. He cannot swim and can't get off the island. Darwin consults with Wallace and is told that elephants can swim and are also indigenous to the region, so they convince an elephant to swim to the island and carry the black bandit to the shore so they can all escape together. Once on shore, a charred appearing holy man emerges out of a smoky tree. 
Roy refers to him as the mystic. The mystic swears revenge on Governor Odious for burning the land which was once a verdant forest, but the black bandit says they have no use for a mystic. The prisoners storm the fortress where the black bandit's brother is imprisoned by Odious black guard. Once they breach the gate, the mystic has already used his magical powers to defeat a great number of guards. The black bandit apologizes to him and asks him to join them. They are too late though. The blue bandit and his crew have been tortured, killed, and are displayed hanging from the ceiling. A wealthy hypochondriac, Walt Purdy, aggressively interrupts the story and thinks Roy is telling disturbing tales to Alexandria. Alexandria runs off and goes to watch the priest give communion in the hospital chapel. When the tale continues, the black bandit takes an oath of revenge. When Alexandria tells Roy that her father died, he drops the accent and she envisions Roy as the black bandit. The group continue their search for Governor Odious. Roy says they use a map to look for Governor Odious, but Darwin unwisely placed it in a box with some bug specimens. The bugs have been eating the map, and the directions to the castle are lost. The mystic snatches and swallows the map, which Darwin says is poisonous. He then goes ahead to lead the team into a part of the desert where they find a jungle. The mystic's poison weakened body drops to the ground but is lifted by people from the earth. They perform a ceremony where a tattooed map appears on his body, which Darwin then sketches down. The map leads them on the next leg of the journey, which takes them through many exotic lands until they come to a desert plain. They can see a caravan flying odious flag being pulled by slaves. Ada is repulsed by this and insists they free the slaves. As they are barreling down to attack the slave masters, Roy interrupts the story and asks Alexandria to pinch him some morphine so that he can get some sleep and finish the story. She agrees and sneaks down and takes a bottle from the dispensary, but she only gives Roy three pills. He is upset because it is not enough for him to commit suicide as is his intention. The story continues. Luigi goes after the slave masters with the black bandit and the Indian frees the slaves with Ada. The slaves run for the hills then the group opens the caravan but there is no odious only a princess and her nephew. The black bandit instantly falls in love with the princess. They kidnap the princess whom Alexandria imagines as nurse Evelyn and take her to a palace on a lake. Alexandria interrupts the story and has to go to the toilet. Her mother and sister come to visit and the doctor says that she will have to stay a few more days. Later that day the movie producer comes to see Roy with the leading actor Sinclair and the leading lady Alice who Roy was lovers with until the accident. He makes a compensation offer to Roy while Alexandria gets to see a sad Alice and talks with Sinclair who is now involved with Alice. When Alexandria goes back, a suicidal Roy asks her to steal Walt's pills so he can overdose. She gets him the pills and he eats them and continues with the story but tells Alexandria to leave when he falls asleep and not to come back. The group discover the princess to be the fiancé of Governor Odious, so they plan to execute her for treason. Black Bandit does the honors and shoots but a locket around her neck stops the bullet. This opens the locket for the first time and reveals a message from her father. She must not marry for power or riches but only to follow her heart. The Black Bandit and the Princess are to be married, but they are betrayed by the priest. The church fills with odious henchmen, and the group are taken prisoner once again. They are shackled and taken to the desert to die, while being beaten and tormented by the guards. They are rescued at the last minute by a young girl who had been stowed away in one of their packs all along. She unties them and they overpower the guards, who turn tail and run. Then the Black Bandit and Ray both pass out. The next day, Alexandria is shocked to see a stretcher with a dead body and thinks it is Roy. She goes to Roy's ward and sees that another patient had died and Roy is still alive. She is happy, but Roy is devastated. He realizes that Walt's pills were sugar pills and goes ballistic and has to be restrained. That night, a worried Alexandria sneaks out to steal morphine so Roy can get some sleep. She accidentally falls from the shelf and is knocked unconscious. She has many strange visions of legs being injured, of her father's death, her fears of the hospital, and other weird imagery. By the time she regains consciousness, some time has passed, and Roy is now drinking heavily. 
Despite her pleading with him to finish the story, he says it doesn't have a happy ending, much like his, and he cruelly tells her he only told it to her so she would get him the pills so he could end it all. Begrudgingly, he continues the story and tells her the group then goes to infiltrate the castle of Odious, who is imagined as the film actor. On the way, Wallace detours to collect an Americana Exotica butterfly but is shot by a guard. Darwin is devastated when Wallace dies of his wounds. Guards soon surround Darwin and shoot him as the others flee. As they make their way onward, Luigi is shot. The others continue without him, but he draws many of the dog-like growling guards into a building and sacrifices himself by blowing them all up. Alexandria protests as the mystic has his hair cut off and is killed by the guards. Likewise, when Ada is killed trying to protect the little bandit from the guards' arrows. The Indian is also killed when he sacrifices himself to stop some guards. An upset Alexandria wants to know why Roy is killing everybody. He says it's his story, but she tells him it's hers too. They finally find Odious. The bandit is easily overpowered, and Roy tells Alexandria that he is weak and a coward, and had his fingers crossed during his oath to avenge his brother. Odious is drowning Roy in a pool, and Alexandria is crying and begging for him not to die. Alexandria keeps begging him and then makes Roy swear to let the black bandit live. Roy promises and the black bandit regains the strength to overpower Odious, who stumbles onto his own sword and dies. The princess tells Roy he has passed the test for her heart, but Roy tells the princess to go do one, much to Alexandria's delight. Next we see a new Roy, Alexandria, and the hospitalized children watching the silent movie where Roy was injured. They are all loving it and having a great time. Finally, a montage from some silent movies when stuntmen performed incredible acts of bravery without the benefit of modern health and safety precautions. We really hope that you have enjoyed this one and you look for it to watch in full. Peace out. Let us know what you thought of this one. Did you recognize any of the locations? Hit us up in the comments. Like, sub, and all that good stuff.